Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery. Welcome to our beginner series on learning Swift to make iOS apps. In these set of tutorials, we're going to take you through various aspects of the Swift programming language, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll be comfortable using it to make your own apps. Um, so Swift is relatively new language. Um, it was introduced by Apple about a year ago, and I mean, even most of the people working in the industry are still getting to grips with the language. Um, and with Swift 2.0 coming out later in the fall, there's really no better time to learn this language. Um, you're sort of starting at the same uh, starting line as everybody else. Right, so let's get to it. So let's launch Xcode. Um, so we'll be using Xcode version 6.4. And let's get started with a playground. I'm going to call it My Swift Playground. There we go. And we're going to save it somewhere arbitrary, where I'll probably forget where it is, um, but that's no matter. So here is where your playground is, and here is where you write the code. I'm also going to go to View, Assistant Editor, Show Assistant Editor. And this allows me to see the console, and this is where we'll print various things. Um, so let's get rid of this thing first. Uh, so first thing on the code, we've got an import statement. So that uses the keyword import and allows you to incorporate libraries of code um, into your own code. So here we've got import UI kit, which is the library that's used to make iOS apps. So we'll keep that there. And then we're going to make a comment. This is a comment. So what is a comment? A comment is a bit of free text that is not interpreted by Xcode as code. So it allows you to write anything you like. Mostly um, people use it to um, try and explain to themselves or others what they're doing. And it's actually really important to comment well because 10 years down the line, you would have forgotten what you were thinking about and you would think, oh my God, I am a crazy person. I do not understand what I'm trying to do here, especially if your code gets complex. So it's always good to try and um, explain to yourself what you're doing as you go along. So if you want to write more than one line of comment, you use a four slash star. This is a block of comment and when you're done again star and close it off with a forward slash and you're back to normal code there we go so let's begin by talking about constants so constants are values that you don't want to change so what's a value that won't change my name i don't think i'm going to change my name anytime soon so the key word here is let, let my name, let my name equal, which is a string. String is a string of characters. So this is a string, Angela. So it's a string made up of A-N-G-E-L-A. -E and the way that we declare strings is by having quotation marks around them. And there we go. So in the playground, it's showing that my name is Angela. But what if I suddenly had the whim to change my name tomorrow to Emily? And there we go. So Xcode is complaining that you can't just you can't just suddenly decide to change your name. <laughs> You've said that it's a constant and now you're not making a constant. That's what it's trying to say. <laughs> Make up your mind, man. Okay, so we can't do that with constants, but if we wanted a variable that changed a lot, then we can declare it as a var. So a variable, variable. What is something that changes a lot? So my music change, my music taste rather, changes a lot. So my music is a string and today I'm listening to DJ Format. Excellent rap music. I would definitely recommend it. Um, so today I'm listening to that 
But now I'm able to change this. So say tomorrow I decide to have a bit of jazz in my life. I'm going to change this to John Cotrain. And perfectly happy because it's a variable. Variables you can reassign at any time you like. You can, you know, change as much as you like. But if you suddenly go crazy and decide that you want your music to equal 23, then Xcode again is like, what the hell? What are you doing, man? You can't say that it's a string. You said my music was going to be a string. And then you're trying to pass me a number. What is going on? So that is not possible. Um, so what if I wanted to, um, what if I wanted to make something that is string into a number? So let's say, so my number equals 23. So this is printed as a number. You can see by the lack of quotation marks. And what if I wanted to turn that into a string? So var my number as a string. So how do I turn that into a string? So firstly, I say it's a string. And here I should have said it's an integer. So integers are numbers, whole numbers, basically. So here, my number is a string, is a string, and it equals a string that is my number. So here, what I'm saying is um, I want my number to be turned into a string, and this is called casting. So it's like casting magic spells. I magically want to turn my number into a string. So what if I'm being super undecisive? So I've got my number, which started out its life as a, as a number, as an integer. And then I decided that I wasn't having any of that. I was going to change it into a string. So I cast it into a string. As you can see by the quotation marks, it's a string. Now I want this string back into a number. So var my number as a string back into a number. By this point, Xcode is going to be like, <laughs> who is this person? I don't want to deal with you. OK, so now we want to change it back into a number. We take this value that was a string, my number is a string, and we say dot to int. So back to an int. And there we go, we've changed it back to a number. Okay, so let's do something else now. So you don't actually have to declare all your variables and your constants with just, um, just characters from the keyboard. You can go a bit crazy and you can in fact use emojis. So let's put a music mark. That's the name of my variable and it's going to equal music. There we go. You can also use Unicode. Um, I'm not sure I know anybody who uses this, but it's just an interesting function. <laughs> um, OK, so what we have shown here, so this should have actually been written as we've been writing before. Music symbol is a string and it's music. But why did it work without that? Because Swift has something called type inference, where it's able to guess, look into the deep recess of your mind and figure out what you're thinking. No, um, it's able to guess what type you are trying to uh, make, what type of variable you're trying to make. So we've got two types here that we've seen already, strings and integers. If I put quotation marks after the equal sign, it will guess that it's probably a string and it's probably right. So even if I didn't explicitly state that this was going to be a string, it's able to guess that it's probably a string. Right, so join us on the next episode where we go through um, more data types um, such as integers, floats and doubles and we'll show you how to manipulate these um, data types and variables. So see you next time. Adios.